All right, before I start this lab, I want to say congratulations to Ritish. Ritish ended up uh, getting a help desk job. Ritish actually did um, uh, a live training with us like a month ago, and now he got the job. So I am very, very happy. And uh, there, um, there are other people who have done the live training after this, and hopefully they will send me the message like this. So again, congratulations, Ritish. This is Ritish right here. So this is another success story for us. If people want to know, Hey, go to jobskillshare.org, click on the Instagram link on the bottom. You will see so many different stories. Like for example, I'll show you quickly, click on this link and right here, it will take you to one of our, every time we see some kind of success right there, I basically put it right here. So you can see there are many people that have landed job. You can see right there, um, hi dear, my lovely brother. Thank you. I'm so excited. I just got an offer of 50K. And on 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 and on. These are the people that are landing jobs left and right. I want you to be like them. So let's get into our basic lab. Hello everyone. So today we are going to do a small basic lab for your interview questions. So just in case you finish the courses on jobskillshare.org like IT Fundamental V1.0, um, this one or maybe the help desk entry level to specialist course on jobskillshare.org or maybe you finished the uh, the live training with us and because the live training is a little bit more advanced and we recommend that you already finish the IT fundamental course but this lab could be used for something very very basic like you know someone just wanted to test your extreme basic skills in IT where they can just quickly say that okay you are not ready for this job so Number one, what we're going to do is just kind of like go to the lab. I'm using the Network Plus lab and in this lab, I'm using the OS updates. So let me just show you quickly. I'm using this lab right here. So if you have a premium access, then I'm using the Network Plus 007. And this is the labs that I'm using from this specific lab. So again, I'm going to make it big again. So in this lab, I want to test your skills. Because if you went through all of these courses, the basic ones, entry level, IT fundamentals, this should be a piece of cake after this, after these courses. So this could be your interview question too. Someone will just open up a server like this. And I even answer my question. Well, that was dumb. <laughs> if someone asks you, what is this? What is this? Is this an operating system? What operating system? So they are not testing you specifically of like you know they're they one they don't want answer like 2012 or two something like that no they might just test you by you telling them that okay this is an operating system it's server because i can clearly see it says server manager on the top but server manager can be installed on a desktop too you know it could be add on it could be added but if someone asks you what is the whole operating system can you tell me by going to this operating system and can you tell me what it is where to go where to find this simply right click on the start menu go to the system and i'm not doing any command stuff like where maybe they're not testing your command type of skills they can but you know most of the time if someone wants to to check your extreme basic skills in it then this is what they're looking for then you tell them okay this is a windows server 2012 r2 right there and uh, other information is also available over here. Now, they may have Windows 7 like this, and I'm gonna reconnect it again. And they may ask you that, can you tell me in this Windows 7 machine, can you tell me how to find if this machine is connected to a domain environment, or is this machine on a work group environment? Now, if you don't know about anything about work group and domain environment, then you're going to be like paused, right? You're going to be like, mm, I don't know what is he talking about. So this is the stuff that you have learned in the course. And what you will do, you'll go to start and then you'll go to my computers, right click on my computer and then go to properties. And from here, you can simply say that, hey, OK, I can tell you this by going to properties. And this computer is connected to the domain uh, controller uh, and that our domain address is practicelabs.com you can also tell them that you can change it by going to the settings and change it over there now what if they say that how would you find if this is on workgroup 
right in, on the top on the bottom this is going to say domain workgroup and then we you can change it from here by click on change and then of course you can put the workgroup to put it back in the workgroup or you can put it on another domain changing a computer name I mean that should be known to so many people how to change a computer name you just go there and change the computer name by changing the set settings now what if someone say that you know how do you add a person into active directory now of course if you don't know this term active directory that's it you probably will not get a job if you don't know anything about active directory in a help desk environment so this is why one of our course like we made a whole course on active directory and specific skills like ticketing systems so make sure to go to jobskillshare.org and take that course and also it is one of the sessions the second sessions that we're teaching in live training so by going to active directory you're simply okay you're gonna go to domain controller or they may be added like you know like an add-on to one of these desktops and then you will be have the same uh features like go and go to tools then you're gonna go to active directory here in active directory you will find out your domain and then you will expand that right there and then here users then there are many ways you can add a user by right clicking on here right clicking on here it could be another folder and that's not the only way to go to that you can also go to the start and then from start you can click on uh you know administrator tools and then administrative tools you'll find the same options active directory and users and computers so by by doing this by showing this to someone i already know that you know this basic stuff which is extreme basic i would call it what if someone tell you can you go to windows 7 and ping windows 10 machine which is this one how do you ping it now if you don't know this by going to cmd and ping command that is extreme basic you really need to know this okay so how are you going to do that? Simply go to start and then start you're going to type CMD and then open CMD. Now I'm showing this in extreme basic way also because I don't want to put any hot keys or oh you can do this with the keyboard stuff like that. No, I just want you the basic stuff like how do you get to it the normal way by searching it, finding it out and then ping that machine. Ping P lab win 10. And that's it you ping the machine and then you get the results now if you get a ipv6 like some big amount big big number in there then what you are going to do you're going to type just minus four with it like this and then it's going to give you the ipv4 address if you get the ipv6 first okay this is basic now what if someone tell you that how are you going to uh, log in to PLAB Windows 8 machine. I want you to remotely log in from this machine, which is our basic task. Everybody in IT, when you configure a server or when you configure machines, at some point you need to RDP to that computer. Now, what is RDP? How do you get to RDP? Simple, click on start right here, and then you will type remote desktop connection, and then this will come up like this. You will click on that, and then from here on, you're going to type the computer name which is going to be let's say for example p lab win 10 810 and then you will get the prompt now this is a very common call for you in a real world when someone from outside this could be your staff members when they connect vpn connection they get like some kind of secure connection going on from their normal machine to their work machine so what happened is that their normal work machine domain is showing work group computer is showing over here every time when they call you they will call you like i cannot get into my machine i am i am connected to vpn but most of the time they're not using the right domain address so they will do other you other user and then here they will use the domain like for example in this is practice lab but in your case it could be like let's say ccq hq headquarters or something like that you know whatever you want to name it jobskillshare.org slash the username and password and then they get into the machine this is a very very common call for the help desk i mean i've been in help desk and i have seen this call almost every time i i uh, try to install a, a vpn or try to set up a laptop for somebody else 
the next day I'm gonna get this type of calls, okay? And the basic um, thing people can just test you on something like an issue, which is a very common issue. And that in a healthy environment, because every machine is connected to the active directory environment, and sometimes it will lose that trust relationship between a domain and your computer because either it was turned off for a long time or something weird happened, and you need to know fix it. So you will see something like this, and people can give you this type of scenario. Then you put it on domain controller, and the fix is pretty easy. And of course, this can get a little technical, but the fix normal fix would be extremely easy by you logging in to the computer itself. Right now, you can clearly see that this is using a domain um, uh, uh, account right here. So you can see if you look at it, this machine name is PLAB Win 10. So this is the kind of skill that they're testing right now, what I'm doing. I'm actually logging into the computer account now as an administrator. They will give you that password to know that, okay, yeah, this is what we were actually looking for. You need to log into P Win 10, and then you will be able to fix this issue because then I'm going to rejoin this machine back to the domain. So when I log in, right now I'm logging into the local administrator account of this machine, and then I'm going to go into the, the settings. And in settings, I'm going to go back, and then here, I'm going to say change settings. So, the fix usually is like this. This is connected to, the, if you go to this, okay, this is already on domain, why it's not working? Because it's already lost the, the trust relationship. Usually, the normal fix is like, you know, you just go to the word group, just type the word group again, like that, and then say okay. And then, okay, I'm just going to say okay again, and restart this machine. So, what will happen, this machine will remove itself from that domain. It is going to go back to the word group, okay? After that, you will restart it, and then put it back on that domain again. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that again, and restart this machine. Alright, so when I restart this, see it automatically log into now administrator account without using that PLAB account. So now I'm going to go back now, go to systems again. And in systems, I'm going to join this computer back to the domain domain controller. So remember in the first time when I said if someone can test you that you can, they can give you the machine like this and they will ask you how would you find if this is on a work group. Right here, it's clear example that this is on a work group. This is not connected to our Active Directory right now. I'm going to go ahead and change that and add it to our domain by clicking on change and here I am going to click on that uh, practicelab.com practice lab I think it's practicelabs.com and now I am going to get a username and password I'm going to put administrator and say OK. How did I find if this machine is on the, the, the practice lab? What, what is the practice lab? This is our domain controller, remember, right here. And it is also disabled. Now, there are other ways to fix this issue, but I'm going to show you what you can do from the desktop side, which is pretty easy for you. Now, this is connected back to the domain. I'm going to go ahead and restart this machine and click OK here. And I'm going to restart it. And that's it. That issue will be fixed. But if I go here now and I refresh this, watch, see how it's showing that little arrow that is disabled? But I'm going to refresh this and see it went away. This means that this machine had, you know, um, it, it went back, it, it, it created that trust relationship again, and the issue is fixed. Now, if somebody will test you in this and you do all this process, I'm telling you, they're, they're not going to ask too many questions. That's it. Like, you know, few things that, that clearly tells me that you know about the domain environment you know see how it's using the practice lab slash administrator now and that's it you're logged into it and you're on that domain environment so in this scenario we will let's say test you on a sharing file between one server and with other people in the network how would you create a folder let's say I want you to create a folder and this folder should be accessible to everybody in your network so I'm going to say right click and create a folder and let's just call it everyone now you can see you have two ways to share a folder with the whole network you can right click on it and there's a share with and you can just click on uh, specific people or everyone another way is properties I prefer this way properties going to sharing and in sharing you go to advanced sharing and advanced sharing you will click on share this folder and then you will click on permissions and let's say I want to use everybody to give them full access of course and when you go a little bit more in detail you never do this but you know it, it it may require it may be required in some cases so you'll click on apply here and click OK now how would how can someone first they can test your skills by knowing how to share but then the second skill of testing would be basic stuff would be how do you go to Windows 10 and access that share then that will be a test for you and they'll be watching you and monitoring you what do you do right here as soon as you come here they know what you're doing right now it's backslash backslash i already know that now you know your stuff i will like i'll type the p lab bc01 slash and even if i just enter like that it will show me everything that is being shared from that computer 
as, as you can see if I want to look for the one that I'm I did it should say everyone and there should be one in here right here everyone so when I double click on that you see I can get in there I'm gonna go here and create a folder from this machine and then add like a let's say a, a text fold, text file and then you can prove it to them that this is there you go I just shared something in this folder and now I can go into here and then there you go you can also do the same thing by coming over here right click on it go to run and when you go to run and just type the same path p lab uh, dc01 slash you can put the same full folder name as you can see it just popped up right there or you can just click enter and it will open the same way so that will be another way you can kind of like you know show it to them that you know multiple ways of doing one task now another basic question they can ask you how would you know if this is uh, DHCP or is it getting an automatically IP address or is it is this the static IP address so it's something like if as soon as they ask you you should be first like okay I can find this out by showing them now there, there are the way commands and stuff like that but I want you to really do it this way because then they know where you are going actually they may want to know that how would you go to adapter settings by clicking here going to the adapter right there by clicking on uh, adapter one of these adapters like this is the one that you're connected to you'll click on Ethernet and then after that you will click on IPv4 this is the address that you have by going to properties that that's something you can explain to them oh okay you came here you go to properties and here you go it is actually a static address if it was a DHCP address and getting an automatically getting an IP address then it will be DHCP now there are other way by going to like IP config and stuff like that but this way you can actually show it to them that graphically this is how you do it now another question someone can ask you how would you tell me by not going here how would you know that IP address of this computer simply by there are many ways by going to the command prompt but I'm just gonna right click here and go to the command prompt right there and then just type IP config now this is the command that you should definitely remember uh, because people can ask you can you find the IP address of this machine and when I do IP config you can see right here this is the IP of this machine which is the same IP over here okay so again there are many many different basic tasks I would recommend you to take one of our courses go to jobskillshare.org either take the live training which is kind of like you know you are training with a professional for five days or two days or you can take the free training on a home page register with the free account there are many videos that we have created on the membership page to explain our memberships the free membership gives you more than 80 plus hours of content and this is where you're going to learn more than basic now this is where you learn the real help this type of things like you know imaging deployments and many other things that will advance your career to even next level and this is where why people are landing jobs because they know more than basics but basic is extremely important too because you don't want to be learning something advanced and then you cannot answer the basic stuff like IP config now this is why we recommend our IT fundamental course which is our new course where you learn these type of things but of course not everything will be covered so I will try my best to keep up with these basic stuff I do that in interviews uh, before your interview I do that in your live training and I also do it on YouTube thank you for watching this video if you like this video please like it comment subscribe and let me know if you want to see more like this and I want to see you be a part of people like this where they send me a message that hey I got a job thank you